Greetings, everyone, and thank you for listening to The Black Report. I'm Deron Black, lifelong resident of Kansas City, Missouri, U.S. Navy veteran, proud, humble servant to my community, state, and country. I appreciate you for listening. It's my humble intention to inspire, uplift, and inform, and for this platform to reserve as a reminder for myself and to point to others towards, or and to point others towards the things that I believe are important and deserve our focus. Again, thank you. But don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you find something of value, or even if you want to poke fun or, you know, um, make a few jokes at a guy like myself, um, go ahead and do that. Um, but just don't forget to like and subscribe and, you know, go ahead and leave a comment or so. And um, of course, I would always appreciate it. And I know it's been a while. If you, you know, been listening, you, you probably thought like, oh, my God, man, you know, D Black's done fell off. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I fell off. Um, I um, actually got sick. I was, you know, had a flu or something, but I was pretty under the weather for about a week. I had very little energy, um, really wasn't interested in doing anything, but just, you know, kind of resting up, you know, thank God I don't have to go into an office or anything like that and be around other folks. Um, so, you know, still gave me the opportunity to, you know, make money and also um, be able to focus on my health as well and, you know, get back on my feet. So, bam, here I am. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's um, been a lot of things that have been happening. Um, I think before the little break, the Kansas City Chiefs were on their way to the Super Bowl. And of course, guess what? We won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a whole bunch of conspiracy theories going around talking about, you know, how. Um, the Chiefs and the NFL and Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's relationship and Joe Biden all related to some theory that, you know, Taylor is um, out to get Biden elected and that since she's dating Travis Kelsey and he has been seen in Pfizer commercials, you know, um, supporting the COVID shot, um, you know, just, you know, all, all these different things. Um, but the thing that they always tend to forget or miss out is that what we probably got one of the greatest quarterbacks band to ever play the game. And, you know, I did not think that I would be making that statement ever, but it's true. It is true. Man, Patrick Mahomes, he's probably one of the greatest to ever do it at this point. You know, um, some people would say, you know, hands down. I think he's definitely working on making himself a part of a permanent part of that conversation, you know, because everybody, of course, will always have their opinions. But he is definitely doing his thing, man. And hats off to the guy, yo. Hats off to Pat Mahomes. You know, I um I wasn't a Pat believer right out the gate. You know, I didn't know who the guy was. Uh, he was on the bench, but a lot of folks said that he really showed out um, down. I think it was Texas Tech, where Pat comes from, um, and that you know we were really, you know, just sitting and sleeping on a player that could really do some things and it you know it's turned out to be true and then also man you know we got one of the greatest um, coaches as well you know Andy Reid you know sometimes comes off as a little bit of a of a uh, you know I don't want to say anything you know offensive to, to coach Reid um, or about coach Reid but um yeah sometimes you know you think y'all oh, man big old jolly guy Shoot, that dude's a master with them plays or, or in the master with um, being able to get that team, you know, where they needed to be and to perform how they needed to perform, perform when it counted the most. You know, it didn't start out uh, peaches and cream. You know, everybody had their doubts. I went to the first game, you know, saw them lose to Detroit and it was I, I thought that they probably should have lost by more than what they had lost by. Um, it was almost a, 
a one man show with Pat pretty much, you know, running all over the field trying to do what he can. We got receivers dropping balls and, you know, every, every, you know, all those different things. And, um, yeah, they eventually found out where they needed to get themselves together made those adjustments went into the playoffs um, with out no any home field advantage and so you know that that was a, a a statement as well but of course Patrick Mahomes stepping up doing this thing and the other guys on the team as well of course you know that's one of the things that I love about football it's such a team effort um, you know regardless of the other things that are associated with football you know because it's a lot of politics behind football which is the reason why I can understand why a lot of folks believe that you know, it could be certain influences from other places, but um, I ain't, I'm not going there. Um, you know, I, I I love Patrick Mahomes and I, I, um, I really appreciate what he's doing for Kansas City and with that team. You know, I, I really don't think that you could, you know, you could ask for, you know, you, could, you probably can. But in my opinion, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't ask for, um, you know, a better quarterback representing the team. Especially, you know, he's a family man. You know, when you hurt him, um, give uh, a shout out to God, you know, um, and recognizing, um, you know, Jesus as his Lord and Savior, you know, which is, that's all good. I, you know, I'm a Muslim, but I don't knock Christians at all. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, when you really look at it, you know, Muslim Jews and Christians, we um, all um, really have um, very similar doctrines. Um, so, you know, definitely don't hold anyone up for that. As a matter of fact, I think it's definitely something that, you know, I would like to, to see more of in our society um, of pe people embracing, you know, um, religion. I'm not, you know, necessarily an evangelist myself, you know, but, um, you know, well, well, uh, I'll stop. You know, I'll, I know I can tear off into tangents every once in a while. So let me let me let me pull it back a little bit and try to stick to the script. Anyway, um, I was on my man Patrick Mahomes, and yeah, ba big shout out to Patrick Mahomes. Big shout out to the Chiefs, and of course, I don't want to leave out the craziness of Ice Spice uh, being caught on camera with a upside down cross, and you know, throwing up the the so called um, Baphomet sign or or the devil worshiping sign. You know, I I, I, I really do want to pause real quick and just take a moment to address that situation, right? Because I saw it and, uh, well, you know, at first I saw, you know, the young lady with the, with the cross and I thought that was pretty curious um, considering that, you know, and I just listened to her music the first time, you know, because she had did a performance and I think it was Michael Blackson that I had seen um, at the performance um, in Las Vegas and Blackson was, you know, filming the performance and, you know, Blackson had a look of astonishment on his face. Like, and it wasn't all good. You know, it wasn't, I don't believe that he was probably thinking that this is one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen in my life. And I've heard a lot of things about her performances as well, but I've never, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily um, think just because you look a particular way that, you know, you you going to just automatically have music that I want to uh, indulge in. So I've never heard a verse of that um, young lady's music until the Super Bowl. And when I heard um, what she was producing, whoo, I mean... I would be highly disappointed if, you know, she was just bad. But the, and, and, and again, you know, like Jay-Z was saying about music, it's a very subjective thing. But in my opinion, oh my God, it, it's, it becomes sad, right? I, I don't think it's bad, but it's sad. Because, in my opinion, it is very obvious that the only thing that she really has an interest in is performing, you know, the twerk move 
to keep and to appease her audience. Now, how do you bring that up to a level of having pop cultural iconic status? I mean, or or, or being recognized as one of the up and comings? I mean, again, let's not forget she's at the game with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is supposed to be not just a cultural icon, but a talent. You know, to a degree, I guess. I don't know. I've never listened to any of her music as well. But, you know, when you pulling in five million dollars from a for five hundred million dollars from a tour or a billion dollars. Excuse me. I think. Yeah, I've got to get my numbers mixed up a billion dollars from a tour. Then you have, you know, some you got you got some rank, you know, um, you you she's killing the game. You know, um, I love Beyonce, but, you know, when it comes to that whole, you know, pop cultural iconic figure, you know, Taylor's murdering Beyonce right now. And at the same time, she is basically platforming somebody like Ice Spice because out of all the people that could have been at that game and out of all the people that could have been on camera and who she would have, you know, been next to and all these things, you know, you would Ice Spice, who is obviously doing very little when it comes to cultural, uh, well, I don't even, I don't even, I, I mean, I, I guess it, it is pretty much in line. Let me, let me say it like this. It is pretty much in line with the cultural persuasion is right now, meaning that um, the influencers in the culture are the ones who bring the sexualization in my opinion you know well part of it part of the major influences in the entertainment world um, for women you know in, in black I guess black entertainment black culture right you know it it's sad um, I was talking with my brother the other day and I was we were just going back and forth like who would, who would end up in your top hip hop 100 you know um and you know, my bro said, "Oh man, MC Light I'll automatically." I got I got at least ten spots for the sisters, man. You know, we got ten spots for the sisters, and every single sister that he had named had more to them than just their looks. As a matter of fact, that was probably the, maybe the third, second to third thing down from their talent. You know, MC Light talent, Queen Latifah. Talent, um, man, for all those that know, marvelous. All right, <laughs> talent. You know, I, I forgot a few others. You know, and yeah, people, they, these women had talent, man. Especially, and I'm talking about hip hop. You know, I'm not you now or, or, or rap. You know, we're not talking about anything, any that pop culture stuff. You know, because that's another thing, right? You know. Everybody had a reaction to Cat Williams and the things that he were talk that he was talking about, you know, related to black performers or black men in Hollywood. To the point where, you know, like a couple of days ago, I even went back and I even watched, you know, next Friday or the Friday after the next. And the character of Damien, you know, played by, you know, Terry, 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 what uh, whatever his name is. And also listen to the interview that Cat Williams d did with uh, Willie D from the Ghetto Boys, which was, in my opinion, a much more significant interview uh, when it comes to it, probably black men, you know, specifically, you know, because, you know, it's one thing when, when you're talking to, you know, Shannon Sharp. 
You know what I mean? At, at Club Shay Shay. But, you know, you, when you're talking to Willie D, you know, there there's there's certain subtle things within the conversation that I picked up that I was able to pick up on and and, and, and and take notice of through the very subtle ways, you know, that Wooly D, you know, phrased questions, asked questions, and the way the cat responded as well. But one of the things that I have come to really appreciate about Cat is that he's really on his thing. I mean, I, I didn't know it. I mean, and I appreciate him, um, you know, t- you know, stepping out and pointing it out, you know, because I come from that type of environment, you know, where where you call people to the to the to the um to the carpet, you know. I think it's amazing the amount of talent. And the amount of ability that black people have in this country, men and women, and some of them very natural, very natural. But yet and still, you know, there is a vision that is promoted within the black community that is associated with victimhood that has become, I believe, our biggest hindrance. Because the more that that notion is promoted, then the greater handy, then, 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 then um, uh, um, the more of a handicap we infuse into our culture. Because it's, you know, I'm talking about black culture. You see, I hate that we have to again use this language. You know, somebody jumped on me the other day saying, oh, man, you know, you, well, hey, something wrong with English? Like, yeah, something's wrong with English. It's a commercial language. It, it is now. Um, the society itself um, has been so immersed in the commodification of almost everything. Remember, you know, we commodit you know, chattel slavery was a commoditization of, of, of people. You know, people were commodities. You know, we're still commodities today. It's just in a different way. But because of the language that we have today, it becomes hard to separate people from culture and how you go about bringing solutions and resolutions to certain issues when you can't get certain definitions right. You see, in in science, which, you know, unfortunately, with the level of education that we have here in society today, which, you know, um, that has nothing to do with your color, right? Because we know that there are brilliant black scientists and there are brilliant white scientists and there have been brilliant um, scientists of all spectrums. And guess what? Their economic status had nothing to do typically with the brilliance that they were able to develop. Most of the times, really, uh, um, other than, you know, being able to provide certain comforts in their lives, it had nothing to do with their brilliance at all. Because we have seen the ones who have come from the most desperate of situations actually turn out to be some of the most brilliant people in our society. And so, you, you are able to Produce those type of minds when you have a social condition that can um, that can produce that, you know. I don't you have to it has to be there you know uh, I guess the 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 easiest way for me to to you know help people trying to understand what I'm saying is that the soil right the soil has to be right and you can't get the soil right if you don't have the proper ingredients right <laughs> hey, you know yeah, and I'm not a farmer 
I'm not a farmer, but my great grandfather was a farmer. And um, and I promise you, I'm not I'm not getting off, off, off the subject. Um, all this stuff goes right back, you know, to what I was saying before to, to Cat Williams and everything. You, just, you know, just follow me a little bit. But when you are able to have the right nutrients within the soil, then you can produce the type of crops that you're looking to produce. And one of the ways that you do that on a societal basis is by having educated folks, right? And I know a lot of folks, you know, they get upset when they hear the term education because, you know, of course, in our society, again, the commoditization of certain things because education has become a commodity as well. And it's a poor commodity at that because you're paying a inflated price for it and the quality of it. I mean, come on. That's one of the reasons why there is so much antagonism against the universities. And one of the reasons why we are seeing so much um, um, vitriol basically for the Democratic Party. Because they have so-called upheld themselves as being the, you know, the so-called stewards of education. You know, if you look at anything that's associated with education, typically you're going to find Democrats. And then after the Democrats, you're going to find liberals, a very large proportion of people who fall up under the liberal persuasion. So let me let me tie this education thing with what I was saying about the conversation between Cat Williams and Willie D and you know demonstrating that that mindset that I was talking to you that I was saying of victimhood has now developed into the the biggest hindrance in the black community and in black culture because it neglects and it marginalizes the agency within the black community. Like I said, um, we used to pride, or, or let me take that back. I find out when I look at black, black culture and black history, right? Because it's Black History Month. Remember, we're supposed to reflect on the brilliance of the black community, right? And what happens when you start to focus on the brilliance of the black community? It's one of the reasons why Carter G. wasn't created the miseducation of the Negro, because he knew that at his time, um, the understanding of what it means to be educated was highly distorted. Um, I, I read the book and it's been a while since I've read the book, so I, I probably should go back and read the book. But the modern education are the things that are being promoted in our school system today and the way that it's being promoted in our school system today. And let me speak on Kansas City. If I go from north to south, east to west in Kansas City, there are very, very few people today, I believe, that would have pride in our school district. And they would have, in my opinion, every right in their justification for lack of pride in our school district. Because again, the emphasis is not on education. Because just like I was stressing before about there is a total wrong way and a right way to go about, you know, the natural process. Um, um, like you know, think like such as forming, right? Um, we know things can grow and develop within na- nature naturally, um, but at the same time, nature 
only gives us so much. And it's our ability to, yes, try to take hold of nature because it says that in the scripture, you know, you, you've been given dominion over these things, right? But having that dominion is only associated with the natural process in which that dominion was given to you. And I'm not trying to get too biblical here. But what I'm saying is, is that there is a hierarchy in knowledge and information. And that knowledge and information has very little to do most times with what you receive from any higher institution. As a matter of fact, the first education typically comes from, and especially if you're a Muslim, <laughs> it's understood, it goes from your mother. Yes. Your first education comes from your mother. And like I said, I don't, I'm not trying to stress religion or any of these things, but there's a reason why religion was stressed so much in the early parts of the structuring of the country, of the United States. Because the whole concept of self-governance which really what the United States um, is about was dependent on you having a strong foundation with values and morals. And where did typically people derive those values and morals from? They derived it from their religion. Now, I know we're in Black History Month, so there are some that want to take you all the way back to the so-called founding of the country in 1609. Well, guess what? The United States was not around in 1609. It was a colony of the Imperial Empire of Britain <laughs> and the United Kingdom. And Virginia was... A, 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 a derivative of the virgin queen Elizabeth and so you know yes there are, are, are you know those are so called the seas of the, of the founding of the country or, 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 but you know even some people want to bring it back but, but how could you say that because you have to bring it even back to, to 1492 right well, what happened in 1492 well so called Columbus you know because remember that was a part of the miseducation but why stop there? <laughs> and, I, and I'm making a point here because there are certain scholars which as time progresses, um, modern scholars are, are more and more literature and more of an understanding is starting to be um, developed um, or, 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 or a certain persuasion is starting to form that very clearly demonstrates, right? Which, again, it only makes sense that these lands, of course, you know, settled by so called the natives. Well, the natives had to come here before there was other people here as well. And where do they come from? So then you just. Just keep rewinding the clock back a little bit because in our modern state, right, we have the capacity to see things at a microscopic level all the way down to your genetics, your DNA. And I don't think that people have been more aware of what this whole DNA thing is than any other time before. Because why? Well, you have just went through a great experience, uh, uh, experience where 
lots of folks, and this is no conspiracy or with anything, were injected with a so-called vaccine that, um, or a vaccine, you know, whatever. Uh, I say so-called because, you know, um, whatever. Let me stop because I don't want, you know, people to... You know, start to say, oh, you know, Deron Black is trying to peddle conspiracy theories. No, 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 no. Go look it up. The mRNA vaccine, right? What does that mRNA stand for? Well, rubonucleic acid is RNA. And mRNA and I believe I'm not I'm not a biologist, but I believe it as associated with the mitochondrial rubonucleic acid. And remember, um, DNA is dio oh, nucleic acid, dio oh, oh, man, I forget it. But it's just talking about the structure of the genetics that all folks are made up of. You see, not just a portion of people, we all have DNA. We get our DNA from our mothers and our fathers, a male and a female cohabitating or having intercourse to produce a child, which begins at inception. So, um, yeah, that mRNA um, COVID vaccine in theory is supposed to create a resistance towards viruses by um, and, and don't you know, I might be wrong on this so you know go look it up for yourself um through a you know um mutation process basically let's just say it like that but you know it was an experiment and i can definitely say it was an experiment because it was not it was not certified as medicine um because it didn't go through the proper trials so Again, I, you know, I know I went off, I went off on a low little tangent, so I'll back it all the way up for you. Our education um, in this country um, has been subpar, but it hasn't always been like that. And one of the things that really demonstrates the fallacy of black victimhood is the fact that that was at one point one of the most sought after things in our community, education. And the educators used to be very concerned about Black people being educated But Remember Over the years The Concept of education Was highly altered Because Remember As I said before It was the British Empire That Started colonizing the United States along with the other European countries as well. You know, the Spanish and the French. Um, and the reason why I believe it's important to start looking at this. Um, concept of education and self-governance is because (sighs) 
like I said, it's like when you when you pull back a rubber band, right? It's only it's only gonna go so far before it snaps. And um, I know I've rambled on a lot here, and I, I, I talked about some things I didn't anticipate talking about. But hopefully, you know you'll you'll um, hear something that encourage you encourages you you know to continue to listen and continue to follow um, because this project is just not only dear to my heart um, it's it's necessary it's highly necessary and through that time that I was sick I didn't know how necessary it really was until um, I got I got a, I got a few phone calls um, I got a few phone calls, you know, had some conversations with some folks and, you know, it's, you know, got awakened to, to things that are still happening in my community. And like I like I started out, you know, you know, talking about the chiefs and, you know, and, and you know, diverging a little bit and, you know, it's getting way off track Um Every because everyone knows about well, almost everyone. Well, the world knows. Let me put it that way. I know. I know that for sure. The world knows what happened in Kansas City at that parade, um, and I want to let the world know that, of course, that's not Kansas City, and it's time for some folks to be accountable. And I know that those young men are, are 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 going to be held accountable because, of course, we know the world's watching. But what about the people who so-called claim to be responsible for these situations any other time? But when. I'm sorry for, you know, lack of a better phrase, but when the S hits the fan, you know, they want to pawn it off on some so-called um, theory that they have, you see, because everyone knows almost, and if you don't know, you should know, where the violence exists in Kansas City is the black community. And it's not just the black community, but it's a very large proportion, larger than what it should be. But we here in Kansas City, we repeatedly state, oh, we're going to make a difference. Oh, we're going to make a difference. Oh, we can make a difference. Oh. And then as soon as we make those type statements, right, you see the immediate action that is just as worse as what was decided before. And so it just it just becomes more of the same. And if if and I'm talking to Kansas City on here, if man, if we don't understand that, then we 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 really have to question, you know, what it is that we're doing. So, like I said, it's one of the reasons why I, um, you know, I've, I've, I've doubled down on certain commitments. You know, I'm not letting my past hold me up. I'm not letting my past hold me back. And you should neither. Especially if you have something good to offer and contribute. Seriously. Especially if you have a genuine heart. Man, I have come to the realization that folks are going to talk about you. They'll drag you through the mud. They'll drive you crazy. Yes, I've been there. But I'm telling you, it's all good. It's all good. If you have a genuine heart and you are willing to get out 
and do what you can. You know, you ain't got to do it all. You know, don't be like me. I used to think I had to do it all. I had to do every single thing. You know, like I said, man, drive, that stuff will drive you crazy, make you sick, break you down. But when that happens, if you don't get up, they've won. And who I and who do I mean by they? Well, it's a little bit of an abstract because um, they changes all the time. So I'm not talking about white. I'm not talking about black. I'm not talking about green, purple, Chinese, Asian, Indian. None of it. One of the things that I've learned, in, like in economics and about politics, is that ideas have power. Ideas have power. Ideas have power just as much as a mm, let me put it this way. Cause I was gonna say some stuff and I, I really don't want to put it put it like that. So let me put it this way. Remember, if you believe in the Bible, you know, and even even if you're a Muslim, right? The Bible talks about the serpent in the garden that made a suggestion. Think of that. The serpent didn't come. With a B2 bomber And say submit No That's a little bit further down the road <laughs> or, or Or a sword And put it To someone's head And say Do it No The serpent made a suggestion That created an idea That took our mothers and our fathers Out of grace and I'm talking about mother and father, Adam and Eve. You know. So. Once we realize. The power. That. We have. By just changing our mindset. Then. Everything is within our hands. Seriously. Seriously. Um, but we got to get away from certain ideas Certain ideas and ideologies I believe Are not just taking black folks off the path It's taking the whole country Off the path And, and yes The conspiracy Is that Black folks are the main instrument We're, 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 we're almost the useful idiots to a very large degree. And it's because of our miseducation for some of us and cowardice for others, greediness for some, and it's just way too much selfishness all around the board. Bottom line, period. Just calling a spade a spade, man. We're sitting here looking for reparations in this country when we have folks that have access to things that could build institutions with far greater resources than ever before or have ever been known. But remember, I started out, you know, talking about the Chiefs and then I moved on to Cat Williams and talking about, you know, certain circumstances that Cat was bringing up. And um, I'm going to have to get to that another time. Kind of went over a little bit. Of course, I went off cuff. Um, I'm getting better, though. I really I hope you can see that I'm getting better. Matter of fact, please, man, shoot me an email or leave a comment. Say black, man, this show was horrible. Or black, you know, you, you're getting better, man. You, I'm, I'm really listening. You know, 
Let's have a conversation. I can't, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I promise you, I do not just pull this stuff out of my own rectum and just think it's um, a good idea for me to put a microphone in my face and just word vomit. No, 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 no. So the intention of this is for building and growth, um, of course, for myself. And if you want to participate in that journey with me, um, then go ahead and shoot me an email, black.kcmo at gmail.com. I love you. Peace and blessings, everybody. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>